good afternoon myself dr ravi kumar so today's topic is transitioning to an iterative process so yesterday classes uh, we have discussed uh, the principles of modern software engineering okay and previously we have discussed the new and old way of principles of uh, conventional software engineering so we are seeing that what is the major difference between the uh, principles of conventional as well as the modern uh, software engineering so there uh, the main di difference is when you are considering the waterfall model in waterfall model so there we cannot estimate the uh, exact cost as well as the schedule so until or unless completion of all the phases whereas in the modern uh, software engineering so each and every step in the phases they are they are going to conduct the technical review meeting and find out any faults so the main difference here we can uh, minimize the cost and schedule and providing the more quality so today we are going to discuss about the transitioning to an iterative process okay so this is uh, similar to the uh, yesterday's class uh, that is principles of modern software engineering okay so in the modern software uh, engineering so mainly uh, we have discussed the 10 principles okay so they the first five principles are related to the conventional that is waterfall model and the remaining five is mainly it is used for the modern software engineering so here today we are going to discuss about the how we are using the iterative process this iterative process is similar to spiral and the prototype model okay so here in the uh, iterative process so mainly we are considering this modern software development as the conventional waterfall model so they uh, this will be uh, depending on the previous stage here so for example here this is the phases okay so we have the different types of the phases in the conventional waterfall model so until or unless completion of this phase then only it will move to the other uh, phase here so like that each and every phases will be dependent on the previous stages okay so this is not independent it is any dependent on the phases in the modern software development okay so here in the modern approaches so initially the versions will be we are going to construct the software development and they're taking the addressing the high risk areas they're going to identify what are the high risk areas and stabilizing the basic architecture okay and redefining the driving requirements here first they're going to check that what are the faults in the modern approaches and next one is architecture so this architecture can be uh, they need to verify in a narrow manner and whereas next one is they need to check that what are the requirements of the uh, each and every stages of the software project here okay so this uh, mainly they are going to discuss about the how this will be iterations and mainly they are going to uh, considering the core architecture okay this architecture mainly they are going to verify about the level of functionality so this whenever they are developing the architecture they need to verify about the what is the functionality and the performance and the robustness here okay so here in the architecture or we can call as the design part okay so when they are designing the uh, the architecture of the design part so mainly they need to verify about whether uh, the components is functional properly or not next one is how much performance this can be improved and finally they need to verify about the robustness okay so this can be considered as spiral technique okay and incremental and generations or we can call as the releases so in the software development mainly first basically they are going to uh, release the software later on 
so uh, they are going to address the what are the problems are facing in the basic questions and based upon that they are going to uh, minimize the faults and uh, releasing the some patches or we can call as the uh, service pack 1 service pack 2 like that they are taking the different types of the releases and also here in the iterative process they are considering the whole system okay not the individual part here and they are going to check that how much risk it will be going to have so mainly they need to minimize the risk in the life cycle and also it will be a continuous integration they need to refine the requirements so here in the modern the ultimate aim is they need to check that what are the requirements and the design part okay if design having the faults they are trying to check the faults and uh, drawing the different types of the architecture and next one is plans in the plans they will change the architecture and prepare the documentation okay and here this conventional software projects mainly they are going to avoid it here okay so in the mainly in the transitioning uh, if you are considering the conventional waterfall model to an iterative development so it is very difficult to quantify okay so they are using the technique called kokomo 2 model so previously we have seen that kokomo one model and here to improve the economic impact mainly they are using the Kokomo 2 model. So if you are considering the Kokomo 2 model this will be improved the economy of a scale. So when the economy of a scale will be improved then a return on investment will be gained so that the profit will be earned by the organization. If they are achieving the this economy of a scale it means uh, they are having the uh, so here they are having uh, the this economy of scale it means they are going to lose the uh, in the organization so that's why mainly they need to check that the whether they are gaining the profits or loss so that's why the exponent can be ranged from 1.01 to 1.26 so if it is a 1.01 then we can consider it is an economy of scale here if it is a 1.2 Two six, then we can consider as a this economy of a scale here. This economy of a scale is nothing but they are uh, getting the more losses here. Okay, so here and they need to uh, change the parameters based upon the exponent what they are going to use and where these applications are going to implement it. So mainly uh, process flexibility, architecture risk uh, resolutions team coherence and software process maturity so this will be mainly considered for the exponent because these applications can be uh, used in a different sectors okay so in the iterative process we have the kokomo two principles top 10 uh, principles okay in a modern process the first one is application precedent okay so mainly they need to check that what is the ultimate goal where they are going to implement this software development project okay that domain has to be verified okay and the critical factor how much they are going to understand and what is the plan and implementation or we can call as the execution of a software development project so they should not uh, unpredicted the system they need to predict which uh, they are going to implement these applications in the software development Unpredictness systems can be have the more risk here. So that's why they need to uh, identify the uh, faults and to minimize the uh, faults in the applications. If they're not identifying the faults, and this we can consider as an incomplete or experimental. So the primary reason for the software industry is iterative life cycle process. Okay, so this is the first one first principle and the next principle is uh, we can consider as evolving levels of details okay so LLA iterations in the life cycle establish the product the process and the plans so they need to consider the what are the different types of the products and which process they need to implement it and what are the plans they are going to elaborate it in each and every levels of the software applications here and next one is the process flexibility 
the third uh, principle is process flexibility this process flexibility is mainly they need to check that the broad solution space and whether it will be interrelated concerns okay so that it, it has to use for the continuous incorporate of the changes and next one is these changes okay when now the changes is happen they need to understand the problem and the solution space they need to design and the plans also they need to design before okay this project active uh, must be supported by the efficient change management the next principle we can call as a change management the change management what are the problems are occurred they need to understand and providing the uh, the solutions and the plans has to be constructed for the project needs here and next one is the process and the theoretically the changing process has to be uh, designated for failure okay they need to uh, the tribal projects has to be expected here okay and next one is next principle is configure process they need to verify about the which framework they need to design for the across a range of a project so they need to implement it for the software return on investments next one is the architecture risk resolutions okay first one in the modern process the first principle we can consider as the architecture first okay and they need to identify the what are the risk will be happen in the architecture so that if any risk will be happen they need to change accordingly based upon the components and the control mechanism so here in the architecture first the crucial thing is nothing but the successful iterative development process okay so here mainly they need to consider the architecture and the development stabilizations okay so here which applications it will be suit and what are the different types of the components they need to incorporate here so architecture first and component based development approach so mainly in the modern process first the, they need to consider the architecture and next one is what are the different types of the components they need to place in the architecture here and here the uh, common mechanisms and control mechanisms they need to uh, have the elaborated element in the life cycle and also make or buy decisions into the architecture process so mainly here in the architecture and the component base they need to identify the what are the different types of the components they need to make or buy based upon the architecture process and next one is here we we can consider the uh, life cycle software must be demonstrated okay in the modern okay modern software engineering mainly they need to demonstrate the what are the different types of the software they are going to design okay so when you they are using the demonstration based assessment they can easily check that whether the software or the development is running smoothly or not next one is team coins so in the successful teams the cohesive and the cohesive teams are successful based upon they need to check the what are the source of projects and here what are the difficulty they are going to face in the synchronizing projects stakeholder expectations and also they need to verify about the what is the primary reasons for miscommunications and having the exchange in the information through uh, paper documents so mainly they need to check that what is the main uh, problem uh, while they are exchanging the information like miscommunications will be happening and while they are exchanging the information they need to concentrate the so what are the main parameters they are going to check here and advances in the technology so in the advances in the technology mainly they can use the high level programming languages and uml and visual modeling so many are we are considering these uh, programming languages so we can have the very rigorous and understandable for the technology why means in the high level programming language this is mainly used to minimize the slvoc and when you are using the uml and the visual modeling so this can be uh, so when you are considering this visual modeling so this visual modeling will be easily understand by anyone and also have the more communication software engineering information so here they need to check that what is the paper exchange of the information so they need to consider the previous value 
and also what are the different types of the requirements. And next one is model based formats. In the model based formats mainly they need to check that uh, round trip engineering. Okay, so yesterday class we have seen that road trip engineering is nothing but the combination of uh, forward and reverse engineering. So when you are using this road trip engineering, so it will be supported and establish the change freedom sufficient for the evolving the design representations. Okay, and here the next one is uh, the software process maturity. The software process maturity is mainly used for the capability maturity model that is being called as the CMM. This has to be well accepted for the software process assessment. Okay, and here. The domain experience is very important for avoiding the application risk. So domain experience for the good people has to be implemented and to avoid the what are the risk they are going to face in different types of the applications. And they need to check that what is the available assets and lessons they learned and software process maturity is crucial for avoiding the software development risk here. And mainly they need to check that what are the software assets and lessons they are going to learn in the CMM technique. And one of the main key team is they need to verify about what are the mature process and they need to use the integrated environments and they need to check that object quality control. So this object quality control level is mainly used the automation techniques. So when you are, are using these automation techniques, this will be minimizing the work and providing the more quality here. And when you are using the integrated environment, so the level of automations will be very important for improving the quality in the software process maturity. Okay, so these are the references. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.